is Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement or how to buy consulting services. You'll get tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and managing the consulting. And now your host, Ellen Lafitte. here back at Smart Consulting Sourcing, your one-stop shop for navigating the wild world of procurement for consulting. So forget fancy suit and briefcases for a sec, because today we're getting down and dirty with the really nitty-gritty what exactly makes consulting firms tick, financially speaking, I mean. We're uh, tackling a subject that's crucial for anyone looking to negotiate consulting fees effectively. So we've talked about fee structures, value-based pricing, and you know the various factors that influence those numbers. But there's a piece of the puzzle that's often overlooked, yet fundamentally shapes the negotiation landscape, the cost structure of consulting firms. So just to remind everyone before we jump into the nitty gritty of consulting firm costs, let's circle back to last week's episode on value-based pricing. As we discussed, Value sharing isn't a magic bullet. It might not be the perfect fit for every project or client, and then can be some tricky spots when consultants and clients might disagree. But there's a key takeaway there. For value sharing to work, both sides need to be open and honest. So if your main goal is just the cheapest price tag, value sharing might not be your best bet. So. You have to remember that it's often a trade-off. Consultants take a lower upfront fee in exchange for a chance at a bigger reward if they deliver big results. So this model means sharing the risk. The client puts in some money upfront, but the potential payoff can be much higher later. So it's all about building a true partnership with share goals, not just a way to squeeze consultants for the lowest price. Now, getting back to this topic, you might think, huh, cost structure, how much can there really be to it? So, there's a lot under the surface, and understanding it can be your ace in the hole during the negotiations. So, the real kicker, not all consulting firms are built the same. You know, the cost structure of a blue chip behemoth is a world apart from that of a nimble, smaller firm. And when you work with service companies such as consulting firms, understanding their financial structure offers a window into how they operate and price their services. And at the heart of this structure are two critical components, the cost of revenues and of hand. So both play pivotal roles in shaping the cost firm's offering and ultimately the fees charged to clients. So first, Let's slice into uh, you know, the financial fog to spotlight something that you've probably heard of but might not fully grasp in the world of consulting, the cost of revenue. Now, if we were talking about making widgets or brewing beer, we'd call this the cost of goods sold, or COGS for the acronym aficionados are there. I'm sure there are some. But consulting, well, that's a different kettle of fish, right? Here, our goods aren't tangible items, but the brain power, the time, and the expertise of our consultants. So the cost of revenue, it covers everything it takes to get those brilliant minds working on your projects. Indeed, at the core of any consulting firm, big or small, is it life's blood? The consultant. It's a realm built not on the physical, but on the cerebral, intellect, experience and expertise are the currencies we trade in. Naturally, the launch share of the firm's expense is invested right in here in the people power. But don't think every person in a consulting firm is crafting strategies or analyzing data. You know, the workforce mix can swing widely from boutique outfits where nearly everyone is client facing to larger firms where the consultant crowd might make up to 70%, supplemented by a support and administrative brigade. You know, within uh, the ranks of consultants, there's a wide range of roles and compensation structures. On the end, imagine the eager beavers, you know, fresh from academia and a few years in the game. You know, these folks are often on the front lines, earning their stripes as a salary with a performance kicker, of course, yet build out at rates that might raise an eyebrow or two. It's the industry standard, really, reflecting the hefty investment in nurturing and training 
those dry sparks. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have the partners or the senior partners. They, they are the big guns, you know, not just earning bonuses, but also holding a direct stake of the project they have. You can imagine your partner bringing in a lucrative deal and pocketing a cool 20-30% of the revenue part, even if they're not in the trenches every day. This setup isn't just about rewarding rainmaking, it's about fueling the engine of business development and client relationships. You know, that's a cru those are crucial cogs in the consulting machinery. But consultant, consulting firms are not just about strategy sessions and, and client meetings. There's a significant shift happening behind the scenes. And this shift is centered around technology and operational optimization. You know, and it's profoundly impacting the cost structure of consulting firms. So let's unpack this a bit. They are increasingly bringing key competencies in-house, particularly those related to data analysis, market research, and even slide making. Why, you ask? You know, the digital revolution spearheaded by AI and data analytics is a big part of the story. These technologies aren't just tools, they're game changers, enabling firms to offer more insightful, data-driven recommendations to their clients. And as a result, the creation of robust in-house teams dedicated to this task has become a strategic priority and and this move towards in-house capabilities is twofold in its benefits firstly it's about cost management you know by hiring talents in region with lower labor costs such as india firms can maintain a competitive edge without compromising on quality and the added bonus it's the time differences then that means work can continue around the clock ensuring faster delivery times you know fast-paced business world. But it's not just about being cost-effective or, or speedy. At its core, this strategic shift helps consulting firms protect their most valuable assets, their methodologies, and their clients' confidentiality. You know, in an industry where proprietary approaches and sensitive data are the currency of trust, right? Controlling this internally is paramount, and it ensures that the firm's innovative solutions remain secure and that client information is safeguarded, you know, all while enhancing the firm's ability to deliver tailored, high quality consultancy services. But let me explain the logic behind this organization. It's not random. There's a method to the madness, aimed squarely at delivering the best value possible. You know, at the top, we have the partners, the, fo the focus on two tasks building and nurturing client relationship and driving sales. But what about the mountain of other tasks that are just as essential to providing stellar consulting services? Here's where the rest of the team comes into play, forming the foundation of what makes these firms stick. You know, this includes the new junior consultants and the non-consultant production teams. The, the, the junior consultants are the ones doing much of the heavy lifting, soaking up knowledge and experience like sponges, while they contribute their growing expertise to the project at hand. Then you've got the non-consultant employees handling everything from uh, crunching dat numbers in data analysis and, and conducting market research and polishing up those final presentation slides. So here's a, another deck of wisdom. This layered organizational setup isn't just about hierarchy. It's a strategic move that significantly impacts the firm's cost of revenue. By blending the talents of both consultants and non-consultants within the workforce, consulting firms can obtain cost-effective project execution without sacrificing the quality that their clients expect. So now let's touch on the role of offshore consultant. It's a strategy that's becoming more common by the day. You know, by, by tapping into global talent pools in a region with lower labor cost, firms aren't just saving pennies. They're amplifying their capabilities and ensuring projects keep moving forward day and night. But, and it's a big part, not every task is suited for offshoring. And while it's a boom for areas like IT consulting, strategy consulting demands a more hands-on, locally nuanced approach. And now, if we switch gears 
Um, let's unpack a topic that might not grab headlines, but is crucial to the heartbeat of any service company, I name it, up ahead. Yes, those persistent costs that don't directly contribute to the services delivered, but are vital for keeping the lights on and the engines running. So in the consulting world, overheads are a significant piece of the financial puzzle, you know, encompassing everything from the salaries of non-client facing staff to the rent for those glossy offices and of course the not so small matter of marketing budgets. So stepping into the backbone of any consulting firm, you'll find yourself amidst the hustle and bustle of non-client facing role from HR and finance to marketing, every consulting firm, big or small, relies on these critical support functions. So in small boutique firms, the landscape looks a bit different because here partners often wear multiple hats, you know, seamlessly transitioning from sales speeches to project delivery and then to internal management tasks all before lunch before, of course. And these extra responsibilities, including HR, finance and marketing and so on, are part and parcel of their day to day. So it's a jungle act to re that requires a blend of expertise, of dedication and no small amount of caffeine, of course. So now you contrast this scene with larger firms where specialized departments take the helm. Here, HR isn't just about hiring and firing, it's a strategic function and role in the global war for talent. And these teams are on the front line attracting policies and benefits to not only attract the brightest minds, but to keep them. And in an industry sometimes critiqued for its long hours and, and lack of diversity, these efforts are vital. HR's roles in shaping, including and appealing workplace policies cannot be overstated, aiming to carve out a more balanced and diverse consulting world. A another crucial cog in this machine is knowledge management. You know, consulting at its core is a profession built on expertise and insight. And in a world where projects come and go, capturing and sharing this knowledge internally becomes paramount. It's about ensuring that the wisdom gleaned from one project fueled the success of the next, you know? And knowledge management team work tirelessly to codify, store, and disseminate this valuable asset, making sure that every consultant from rookies to veterans has access to the firm's collective brain power. Now, if we rewind not too many years, and there's, there was a, an unwritten rule in the consulting world. If you wanted to, to, to rub shoulders with the globe's corporate giants, use business card better boast a fancy address. Yet the allure of prestigious zip codes was not just about the view from the office of the restaurants nearby. You know, it was a statement of credibility, a badge of honor, indicating that you were in the same neighborhood as the world's leading companies. But the hefty price tag of maintaining an office in the world's most coveted district was particularly burdensome for smaller consulting firms. Yet the landscape of corporate location is shifting. You know, take for instance Engie, you know, the energy powerhouse, which in 2010 moved its French headquarters from the chic eighth arrondissement of Paris, a stone throw from the Arc de Triomphe, to La Défense, you know, the Euro Europe's largest purpose-built business district. And, and similarly, in the US, HP Enterprises bid farewell to San Jose in California, setting up shop in Houston, Texas. These moves are far from isolated incidents. They reflect a global trend where companies are reconsidering the strategic value of their location. So if the giants of industry are finding new homes in suburbs or less traditional business hubs, it begs the question for consulting firm. What's the real value of a prestigious address in today's world? And last on my list, and but certainly not taking the back seat in importance, marketing. You know, the pulse of consulting, uh, of the consulting world today, a bit stronger with every marketing effort. And if you're looking for a masterclass in marketing for consulting, turn your gaze to McKinsey. You know, their omnipresence isn't by chance. It's a meticulous crafted strategy. They've essentially Netflix the competition with their outstanding thought leadership, their, their prowess in social media and their knack for community building. 
They are everywhere, all the time, setting the gold standard for visibility and engagement. And other firms, you know, big and small, are now playing catch up, recognizing the undeniable impact of robust marketing strategies. And boutique firms, once reliant on word of mouth and the strength of their networks, are now diving into the marketing fray, allocating significant budget to carve out that space in the digital landscape. But let's peel back the layers a bit. It's not just about splashing your name across with every possible platform. Right? Investing in thought leadership, for instance, serves a dual purpose. It's not solely a marketing play. It's an opportunity to shop on your expertise, to dive deep into research and emerge with insight that not only attract attention, but also build your firm's intellectual capital. Today, the, the conception of free, high quality content from thought leaders shapes the way brands are perceived. It's how you stay top of mind, climb to the top of Google searches and get discovered organically. What do you do when you hear about a new firm? You Google it, just like I do. And when their website greets you with insightful, compelling content, it's almost as if you've found the solution you've been searching for. Digital marketing in this era is more than just a tool. It's a lifeline of your brand's credibility and quiet client acquisition strategy. It's about striking that perfect balance between showcasing your expertise and joining potential clients, all while building a brand that resonates and engaged. And in consulting, where composition is fierce and everyone's vying for the spotlight, mastering digital marketing isn't just beneficial, it's essential. So in the grand scheme of things, you might find that costing consulting are refreshingly straightforward, you know? Uh, crafting my income statement each year is hardly rocket science and I don't find myself wrestling with an overly complicated list of expenses. And really, when you boil it down, the consulting cost structure is pretty clear cut. You know, fixed costs are neatly encapsulated within overheads and SGNA, but the large share, the real heavy weight, and it's more than 50% is the wages of the consultants. And so the formula for profitability is hardly a secret. It's keep your consultants busy enough to cover this essential cost. And any revenue that attends beyond this line contributes to the bonus pool rewarding the partners and shareholders who steer the sheep. You know, the sell prowesses and, and strategic pricing pump energy into the top line, while the art of siding the firm ensures profitability doesn't slip through the fingers. Lean too heavily on size and you'll find partners dividing a slimmer slice of the pie as most of your the income revenue is redirected to sustain the team. On the, slips, on the flip side, train too aggressively and the firm might just sidestep significant opportunities knocking at the door. So it's this delicate balance that's nudging more firms towards embracing a flexible workforce and exploring the world of consulting marketplaces. But let's pause for a moment and consider, at the day's end, what's truly pivotal? Is it obsessing over the margin consultants carve out from your project? Or is it the tangible, measurable value you extract from their expertise? You know, understanding inner workings of consulting firms can certainly give you an edge in price negotiation, sure. But it's not the be all and end all. You know, the crux of any negotiation, the real key, lies in the net value created. Now, we'd love to hear your thoughts so what are your biggest questions and about saving money when it comes to consulting? This is episode sparked some cost cutting ideas. So share the knowledge, um, tell your network colleagues or that friend who's always pinching pennies. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest episode to stay ahead of the curve. And if you're hungry for more, we've got workshop on the horizon designed to sharpen your skills and in navigating the consulting maze and maximizing your savings. So if you're interested, you should shoot us an email at hcl at consultingquest.com and we'll spill all the tea. So your thoughts and feedback are always welcome. 
So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or drop an email at SGL at consultingquest.com. You know I'm always game for a chat. Until next time, stay safe and keep up the smart consulting sourcing game. Au revoir for now and happy sourcing. You've been listening to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at consultingquest.com. Find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. For questions and comments, send an email to ellen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. See you next time.